So I just thought I'd make this quick video to talk a little bit about this article that I just came across in JAX a couple days ago. JAX, if you're not familiar, is the Journal of the American Chemical Society, and they're one of the leading journals in chemistry for covering high-impact papers. The article in particular that I'm talking about is titled Innovation in Chemistry at Jilin University. This article showed up in my ACS to go feed, and if you go to the as soon as publishable page on Jack's website, this will just show up in line with all the other research articles. It's not called an advertisement, but that is by definition an advertisement. Now it's just listed as an editorial piece on their website. It's not called an ad, even though that's exactly what it is. So let's just read this article and then we can get into it in a bit more detail. The discipline of chemistry at Jilin University, JLU Chem, as one of the largest and strongest chemistry education and research centers in China, will celebrate its 70th anniversary in October 2022. JLU Chem was established in 1952 by talented educators and prestigious chemists with a motto of dedication, innovation, integrity, and collaboration. It places a strong emphasis on high-impact education and has cultivated substantial leaders and pioneers for both academia and industry. Both basic cutting-edge research and applied science and technology are actively pursued by JLU Chem for the creation of inspiring insights and impactful innovation in fields like quantum chemistry, hydrothermal synthesis of inorganic materials, supramolecular systems, and high-performance polymers. This virtual issue presents recent publications in Journal of the American Chemical Society, Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters, Inorganic Chemistry, and ACS Applied Materials and Interfaces, covering a broad range of research areas, such as zeolites, covalent organic frameworks, perovskite quantum dots, supramolecular ionic channels, and mechanochemically reactive polymers. The breadth of research ongoing at JLU Chem demonstrates its commitment to pushing the boundaries of science and tackling real-world challenges. We hope this virtual collection in honor of JLU Chem's 70th anniversary will inspire a wide audience and spark new trains of thought for chemical science. So this was written by Ji Hong Yu, Executive Editor, JAX, and Director of the International Center of Future Science at Jilin University. So when I came across this and I saw that an editor of JAX has just promoted their own university, to me, this is a blatant ad. So let's read the definition of an advertisement from the Oxford English Dictionary. A notice or announcement in a public medium promoting a product, service, or event, or publicizing a job vacancy. So this is an event. And this is a notice or an announcement in a public medium promoting this event at this institution. So this is an ad. And in my mind, it's an editor utilizing their position to promote their university illegitimately. So I made a community post on the channel about this just to see what other people thought about this. So let's read some of those comments now. Nico. Nico said, I feel this isn't the first time I've seen ads published in journals, but I do think it's not something that should be encouraged. They lose more than they think for getting less than they want. Reputation and respect take a lot of effort to acquire. Advertising like this is cheap in two senses of the word. Campbell Wolf says, ads are fine. Structuring ads like an article is a complete no-no. I was genuinely confused at this point for a second because I thought you'd posted a picture of an article. It even has a cite this link. Who the hell cites ads? Lamau Squash says, I don't mind the fact that it is a paid endorsement, an ad. What I do mind is that there is no clear distinction between it and any other article. Why couldn't there be a big yellow banner saying advertisement? KJ Blue says, it doesn't really feel like an ad, which is troubling. Laura's Hope Flying Adventures says, a no-no from me, in a paid journal? What the frick? This next person says, <laughs> I'm not going to read that one. Ren Agade says, I think it ruins the integrity of the journal. Ian says, ads shouldn't be in scientific journals, and a conflict of interest, yo. Christopher A says, vacuous. Sam Blackstone said, these journals get ungodly sums of money in subscriptions already. Do they really need ads? Oit the Groit says, it's not appropriate because it was designed to look like it's part of the article, which can obviously cause some confusion. This person says, absolutely not. It's hard to tell if it's an ad, so definitely no. Also, they earn money, so why are they shilling ads? And Abraham L. Gothamy says, I mean, it has a disclaimer at the end, so I think any chemist worth their salt would be able to see that. And my counterpoint here is that the disclaimer doesn't discount that the ACS is comfortable with this type of publication in their journals, though, which is the bigger issue in my mind. So let's look back at that article for a second and, and see what the journal actually says. Notes. Views expressed in this editorial are those of the author and not necessarily the views of the ACS. Now that may be the case, but it is the view of the ACS that this is an acceptable thing for an editor of their journal to publish in their own journal. 
This is shameless self-promotion, and I don't think that this has any place in jacks of all journals. If you've watched the series of important papers in organic chemistry series on this channel before, you'll know that Jax is quite often featured in these episodes. I would say even Jax dominates the most significant achievements in organic synthesis that I cover. And it's quite discouraging to see this type of thing published in Jax because it just sullies the name of science coming from the American Chemical Society. Now, many other people disagree with this type of thing, and I couldn't actually find anyone encouraging it. We even had this one humorous remark from somebody on Twitter. So overall, I think that this type of practice is not acceptable. Now, that being said, I don't want any viewers to go and harass this author after seeing this episode. I would prefer it if you're going to contact anyone, contact the lead editor from Jax or tweet at them on Twitter. Now, that being said, I would discourage you to do so. And if you are going to message them, make sure you're respectful. I'd like to hold the journal accountable to this because their own editors let this pass. I'm pretty sure several of the editors would have to approve this type of thing before it gets published. And if that's not the case, maybe that's something they need to look at installing in their protocol. Thanks for listening to this episode, and I hope you have a great day.